On today's show, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite lenses from Micro Four Thirds, the Panasonic Leica F1.7. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph at 9.30 a.m. usually Pacific time. Well, at 9.30 a.m. usually, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time usually, that'd be the right, because it's always Pacific time. Anyway, usually at 9.30, today it's at 10.30, it's just a little bit of a late start on Friday, but we talk about all things photo, video, live streaming related, just kind of anything along those lines is fair game. And today we're talking about gear, a particular lens that I have had for many, many years is one of the first it's probably the first Leica, it might, might have not been the first Leica branded lens, but the first Leica branded lens that I really fell in love with and started using a lot. And by a lot, I mean really a lot. That is the Panasonic Leica for Lumix for Micro Four Thirds, a Panasonic Leica 15 millimeter f1.7. So 15 mil on Micro Four Thirds, that is a 30 mil equivalent for full frame. So this is a very good, slightly wide field of view, not super wide, not standard, you know, your standard being your 50 mil equivalent, somewhere in between there. And for me, this lens has really been the ideal street photography lens. And for me, street photography typically means travel. I don't live somewhere where I go out and do street photography locally, so that means travel. And it is just, it's been a beautiful travel lens. First of all, okay, I've got it here on the GX85. So let's get a little close up look at this. You can really appreciate the size of this thing. Um, very small, very short lens. This is on the GX85. You can see in my hands, and I don't have big hands. So this is a, a really nice compact fit in there. Um, got kind of a top-down view. You can see what that looks like. On the GX85, if you do the flip-out LCD, then you've got a waist-level view like this that's super nice. Just normal shooting, very nice and compact. Uh, easily, you know, easily fits with one hand, easy to carry around, super lightweight. And the lens comes with, it's just kind of cool, a metal lens shade. It's, it's, there's not too many lenses that come with the metal lens shade, but you, this is metal. That goes on there. When you put that on, you actually have two lens caps that come with it. There's this rubberized lens cap that kind of pops into place. That's your normal everyday carrying around setup. But if you don't want that on, it also comes with a standard size lens cap, which I'm sure I have long ago lost because this lens shade just stays on there permanently. But it's a really nice compact size. You can see here, f1.7 and it has the mechanical aperture ring. Now there's not too many lenses that have that. It, it's the Leica lenses from the Panasonic lineup that have the mechanical aperture ring. It's kind of funny. I'm of two minds about it. On the one hand, I really, really like having that option there. I like being able to reach up and turn the aperture ring mechanically, just like you always did back in the day. You know, I go back to shooting from like the dark ages, so that was just the way it always was. But on the other hand, I've gotten so used to most lenses not having it and so used to adjusting aperture with my thumb or finger, depending on whatever the camera setup is, that I tend to more often than not just leave it in the A mode on here. So if we go back to it, as long as if you lock it into the A mode there, then now you can take over from whatever dial, you know, depending on the camera you're using, whatever dial you're using to control it. So it's up to you. You can go either way on it. Uh, like I said, I just, because I'm so used to it with so many other lenses, I tend to not switch for these. But it's great that it's there. And if you had all like lenses with the aperture on there, then you probably would end up using it all the time just because it is so comfortable and familiar. This lens also has a mechanical autofocus to manual focus switch on it, which is really nice. Again, that's one of those things that if, uh, if you're not used to it, you may not really take advantage of it. And on some cameras, like the higher end, the GH series and the G9 cameras have a mechanical switch on the camera to go between autofocus and manual focus. So you don't really need the one on the lens. But like this camera, the GX85 does not have that. So with the GX85 on a standard normal lens that doesn't have the switch on it, you would have to go into the menus to switch it into manual focus, which is obviously a bit tedious. Having that switch on the lens itself can be super, super nice. So overall, very small and compact and lightweight. Just to take, if I take everything off, you can see just how small this really is. It is a beautiful, tiny, very lightweight little lens. Pair that up with any camera, but especially something small like the GX85, and you've got a really, really nice travel uh, travel setup here, travel kit. So what have I been using the lens for? Well, obviously I've said a lot of travel, a lot of street photography, and as I was going through my archives of photos this morning, looking for a gallery to put together to show you guys, I realized that the vast majority of what I've shot with this lens is travel photography. That really is where it mostly comes out. And mostly stills. Now, I have shot some video with it, and we've actually linked down below, we'll link up here as well, to a video that I did for this camera, actually, the GX85 that I shot in New Orleans for Panasonic. And it's kind of a 
like you'll see me on camera talking about the, this and holding it, but then you'll also see shots made with this camera. And a lot of the shots, the video and stills that you see in that video shot with the GX85 were shot with this lens. So if you want to see some video results in that video, it doesn't identify which were shot with this lens, unfortunately, because the video is about the body. But when you see a wider shot in there that's video, it's probably shot with this lens. But we're going to look, take a look at a bunch of stills right now that I have pulled up uh, from this. Now, the lens itself, let's just take a quick look at the buying page on B&H, just so you know the price of this lens, 548 currently for this lens. It looks like it's got a little bit of an instant savings going on right now, normally right around 600. Uh, I don't know how permanent that deal is, but there you go. That's uh, the current price on it. So it's certainly not one of the cheapest lenses in the lineup, but it's far from one of the most expensive as well. Given the sharpness of this lens, the overall quality, the speed, and nice fast f1.7, it's, uh, I would say, price-wise, I think it's a great value. It is one of those that if you're willing to spend a little bit of extra money to have a really good quality lens, you will not be unhappy with this. It's, a, it's definitely a great choice. So with that said, let's take a look at my uh, at some pictures that I pulled together for you. But before I do that, I do want to tell you about one other thing. I have a couple of events coming up I want to make sure you guys know about. So in October, that's this month right now, on uh, Friday, October the 19th and Saturday the 20th, I'm going to be in Boston at Hunt's Photo and Video. There is a free event that you can attend there. I'm doing two different seminars, one that's getting started with video from shooting to editing, and another one on Saturday that is travel photography, keeping it nimble, affordable, and fun. So as you can imagine, I'll be talking about this lens there. These are both free, so you can get more information or register for these events. If you go to photojoseph.com slash events, it'll take you to the right page. And then there's a B&H event happening in, on October 24th, which I don't have the registration info yet, but that will be here as soon as it is. And then on Friday, October 26th at Photo Plus Expo, I'm doing a free, all these things are free, by the way, a free photo walk with Panasonic. It's partnered with Panasonic uh, with the G9s. This is off-camera flash photography at twilight. So we're going to have a kit, a box full of Lumix G9 cameras for you to borrow. We're going to have a box full of, here we go, pro-grade memory cards that you guys can borrow. With any luck, I'm going to have a third-party flash manufacturer still sorting that out. Here's the thing with this, 18 out of the 20 slots are already gone. So if you think you want to go, you got to go register. I am, because it's filled up so quickly, I am going to see if there's any way that I can do a second event. Uh, I, it might have to be not off-camera flash because there's obviously, a, uh, for Twilight, obviously that has to be, you know, at Twilight, um, and there's a limited number of evenings. But I might try and schedule in another event. But if you want to do this one that Friday night, you better sign up now because those seats are almost completely gone. Um, so Photo Plus Expo, if you're going to be out there in New York, go to photojoseph.com slash events, and you'll see all the info about that there. All right, let's take a look at some pictures, shall we? I got a library that I pulled together into... Uh, Lightroom CC. I'm going to go, go ahead and pull these up and kind of go through some of these one by one and explain what they are. So this is New Orleans. This is actually that shoot that I was just talking about for the video. And uh, get street photography. I, I love it for street photography. There, you're going to see a few photos like this in the collection because it's specifically I'm trying to show off the shallower depth of field that you do get out of this. You know, one of those things as a Micro Four Thirds shooter, one of those things you hear all the time from people who aren't used to Micro Four Thirds is comments like either, oh yeah, but you can't get shallow depth of field, yeah, you can't get bokeh, or what kind of lens do I have to have to get bokeh with that? As you all know, when you are shooting with a smaller sensor, it is more of a challenge to get the bokeh, to get that really, really shallow depth of field. That's just the nature of a smaller sensor. That's why on your smartphone, it's really hard to get any kind of bokeh. If you're shooting in medium format or large format, then you can be at f5.6 at 10 feet away and still get really shallow depth of field, right? So it's kind of, it just depends on the size of your sensor. So when you are on a smaller sensor, you want the fastest lens possible, opened up all the way to get that shallow depth of field. And the closer your subject, again, this is universal, doesn't matter what kind of camera lens you're shooting with, the closer your subject, the greater distance from your subject to the background, the the more bokeh you're going to get. That's just that's just facts and science. So I have a series, a collection of the photos in here that I've selected because they show that shallower depth of field. And quite often, because it is such a wide field of view lens, that does mean that I'm up quite close to the primary subject. And then the background is a bit farther away, giving us that nice shallower depth of field look. So it's all about positioning your subject, lens choice, uh, aperture selection and so on. So with that said, so something like this, here you see obviously the violin in the foreground. Uh, the gentleman in the back is uh, clearly nicely out of focus on there. So again, shot with this 15 mil lens. Uh, just great color reproduction. The lens is super sharp edge to edge. Just a beautiful, beautiful lens. Uh, they're a little bit more of the little bokeh thing kind of going a little bit closer on the focus on the foreground. 
Um, very good low light performance. That's one of the advantages, obviously, of being f1.7, wide open. You get a lot more light coming through than you would on a closed, uh, smaller aperture lens. So really, really nice for stuff like that. Here, again, close up, nice shallow depth of field. That's Little Freddie King, if you're wondering, a, ja a blues musician out of, uh, out of New Orleans. Uh, so again, here, close up, but kind of the, the other way around, right? It's, I'm quite close to the subject, but I'm focusing on the, I don't you think you can call it a guitar. I have no idea what that instrument is, some homemade thing. Uh, but the instrument is in focus, and the subject himself is nicely soft. So you're, again, getting that shallow depth of field in there, and even to the background. Right, you can see the the floor in the background there. Uh, the guy, the other person's shoes, those are out of focus. Our uh, musician's shoulder pads are out of focus. His hair is out of focus, but his hands and the instrument are sharp. Um, yeah, standard kind of wider, you know, no, no, everything in focus kind of a photo there. Uh, street uh, street photography, right? It's really for me this lens comes down to street photography. It's so light, so nimble, so easy and quick to to grab and focus and use. Uh, so this is you've probably all seen this photo before. I've talked about this one a fair number of times. This is in Georgia, Tbilisi, Georgia. So now we're at Republic of Georgia, not the state in the United States. Um, these next few photos are going to be from there. When I did the project in Georgia, I was shooting. I think it was. I think I've shot ex almost exclusively, if not exclusively, with the GX85. Again, went for the really small, nimble, lightweight. It's all about street photography. And again, this lens being a key part of that. Not every photo I did there was with this lens, but every photo you're about to see here were shot with this lens. So uh, I'll actually link this photo itself. I've done a, a whole video on the story of this photo. It's kind of cool. So we'll link to that up here. Uh, by all means, do check out that video. It's a, it's a fun story behind that picture right there. So I will s let you watch that one to hear the story for there, for that photo. Um, Great dynamic range. Obviously, this is largely the center of the great dynamic range, but focusing fast to focus, the lens does focus very, very quickly. I think that's one of the points that I want to make on it, and I think I saw a question fly by on this already. Um, it does focus very, very quickly. It's being a wider lens. This is one of those just kind of talking about lenses in general. If you have a lens that is a really long telephoto lens, you chances are you can have a longer rack to zoom, right? Just physically more movement to get through from your closest to your farthest distance. When you have a wider app, a wider field of view lens, that tends to be less of a movement. This isn't like a universal truth, but it's pretty much the way it is. And when you have to move the lens less distance from closest focus point to infinity, then clearly the camera can move it faster. And so you have less of a movement. So if you imagine, if you will, if infinity was here and closest focus is all the way here, the camera has to go from here to here. Whereas if it's just here to here, it's a little bit less movement. The camera can focus more quickly. So you pair that with a camera that focuses nice and quickly and out of focus, as the GX85 does, the GH9, GH9, all those cameras do. With a lens like this, you're going to get really nice, quick focus. And being that it is such a wide field of view, even if you're not perfectly nailed on focus, just really close to it, which is one of the advantages for street photography, you're probably going to get it sharp anyway. So those moments where you just pick up the camera and click boom, and somebody's moving towards you, and maybe they moved out of the plane of focus ever so slightly, odds are pretty good you're going to get focused on there. So it's just, again, one of those advantages of the slightly wider field of view lens. If we look back at this photo, it uh, looks like I was probably focusing on the pan itself. You can see his face is largely sharp, mostly sharp in there, not completely. Um, and we're getting the, the nice fire capture in there, which is always fun. Uh, so some top-down food photography. Again, this is part of the Tbilisi, Georgia uh, story. A low light performance, you know, beautiful low light, handheld. So this lens, it's, uh, I want to point out as well, this lens does not have built-in stabilization. But you don't generally need it on these wider, wider field of view lenses, especially when you're pairing it with a body that has stabilization. The GX85 does, the G9 does, the GH5 does, the GH5S does not. So, so there's actually a great point. If you're shooting with a GH5S, which does not have stabilization, and you pair it with this lens, which does not have stabilization, you are completely locked. You have no stabilization whatsoever. But if you pair this lens with a body that has the IS, then you're going to get that. Obviously, you don't get dual IS. Dual IS is when the lens has it as well. This does not. But, um, but that's part of what makes it smaller and lighter as well. And again, at that wider field of view, having IS is less important than it is on a longer lens. You know, you can handhold a 15 millimeter lens where you may not be able to handhold a 400 millimeter lens just without getting the movement in there. So, so it's just something to point out. But when it comes to, um, comes to low light photography, uh, this lens has been fantastic, fantastic. Um, this, so I have a couple of these top-down shots, and this is one of those, uh, this is part of the Georgia story, part of the Tbilisi Georgia story. And one of the reasons I included these is it's part of this whole very small 
lightweight, easy to work with lens. When you're doing something like this, holding the camera up above, okay, we'll do it like this, <laughs> up above your head, you flip out the LCD. Okay, granted, this camera doesn't do the full flip around LCD, but to be able to get the camera up there, hold it steady, get that up above, holding it way out because it's so light and it's not like I'm holding some big, huge, heavy lens where after a couple of moments there of trying to hold it, you're just starting to lose it. It's just so nice and light and easy, and you really can get those good, stable overhead shots. It's just, I like shooting like that, especially food stuff. I like that straight top down look. So I tend to do a lot of that, especially on this uh, trip. This Georgia trip was, uh, I was doing a story on food, incidentally. So I have a lot of photos like that. And it just, just really works out well for that. And again, that wider field of view, handheld, uh, I, I might have been, I probably was standing on a chair for this photo to be fair, because this is a bit of a wider shot, but uh, able to get that whole table in there pretty easily. Uh, close up, again, going for the close up, look at how shallow that depth of field is. Now, yes, I am very, very close on there, but you get it. You get that really shallow depth of field. In fact, on this shot, maybe even too shallow depth of field, but it's there. You can absolutely do it with this lens. Uh, another top down food shot. <sighs> now I'm hungry. Uh, let's see here, what else I got? So more top down. Um, so here, clearly standing on a ladder or something, standing over the chef who's, uh, who's baking bread here, um, being able to get that, get that shot on there. Where are people walking on my roof right now? Uh, low light performance again. Love this. Love this. Uh, getting a shot of someone building a little fire, a little, a little campfire out here at twilight. Came out to, came together really, really nicely. And there again, you have that bit of a shallow depth of field. Uh, you know, she's obviously in focus. The, uh, the fire is in focus. The flowers in front. And then the uh, mountains in the background are nicely soft. So, and again, very good low light. Uh, again, just kind of street photography type of photos. Um, just a couple of other favorite shots in here that I really liked. Super, super low light. This is definitely handheld. This is um, in a wine cellar, one of the oldest wine cellars in Georgia, if I remember that correctly. Uh, just super dark, one light in there, but obviously came out great. Um, people stuff. So now we're going to get into some people photography. I've shot, I don't shoot weddings. Most of you who watch me regularly know this, but you'll find a few wedding shots in my work and they're all family. You know, this was my brother-in-law's wedding. Um, so. Uh, so I you know, do, do a little bit of photography there for that. And this is some shots with that. And I included these to show people photography. Obviously, we've already some, seen some people in the street photography genre. But now as a wedding camera, um, again, not a professional wedding photographer, but as a wedding shot shooting lens, uh, I think it works out really well. You want those wider shots to get the groups of people in there, get down low, nice and easy. It's kind of fun. Um, if you're wondering where this is, this is Slovenia. This, you probably aren't going to find a, a, a wedding around like this around here in the US. Uh, just great, nice, nice wide shots there. Um, street photography again. This is Oaxaca, Mexico. So I'm just going to flip through some of these real quickly. Uh, love shooting black and white. Uh, nice wide field of view there. Just has the lens just worked out really well for so many different things. Again, low light in the bar, digging it. Close up, shallow depth of field. We're seeing that again. So again, you get nice and close. You definitely get that nice big bokeh in there. Um, super low light capability in here. Oh, they're portraits, just straight up portrait photography. So yeah, this is wide, not the kind of lens you would think of for a portrait shot, but man, you get up close to there and you know it, it can work out really, really well. Um, more shallow depth of field, getting really close on the hands. It's a nice thing about this lens too, because it is so small and light and unobtrusive. Like that photo put up here again, that photo to be able to get, imagine this is someone who's doing this artwork they're just sitting there with their hands doing it. And I'm able to get, if their hands are here, I'm able to get really close to them. Just get in there. And it's not this big, huge, obtrusive thing. It's this really nice, small, lightweight package. It doesn't feel like some big honking camera in their face. You just get that down there nice and easy. With the flip-up LCD, you kind of look down. I don't have to get down on the table like that. Love that. Uh, and it just makes for this really ideal lens for stuff like that. Love it. And there, again, you get the nice shallow depth of field. You get the out of focus. Um, this is paper, actually. She's doing art with paper, making, I think those are going to be earrings. Really, really cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I think this is Sweden. Yeah, this is Sweden. So, yeah, again, just some tourism type photos. But again, street photography kind of thing. Food. Mm, love food. That's actually kind of pretty. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, food photography just is just on the streets. You know, something I bought and, and I had to take a picture of because it was so pretty. Uh, Landscape, landscapey. This is you know waterfall kind of kind of landscapey. I think that's the last one I did in there. Yeah. So anyway, that's. I just wanted to show you some photos over the years. I went through my Lightroom and just filtered by this and filtered by my rated photos and then just grabbed some of my favorites from there. Overall, it's been a wonderful lens to have. Like I said in the beginning, you could do much worse. If you 
if you have a little bit of money to spend because it's not super, super cheap, but it's definitely not super expensive, you want a really good travel lens. I personally prefer to work with fixed focal length lenses for shooting stills than zooms. I tend to go with zooms for video, fixed focal length for still photography. You get the advantage of that shallower depth of field, the faster aperture, and um, I don't mind changing lenses so much. And if you're doing street photography, something like this, you know, it's just one less thing to, to think about with the zooming. You zoom with your feet. I've got a fixed focal length. This is what it is. I'm used to it. When I Before I pick that camera up to my face, I know exactly what this field of view is going to be. I know exactly what the shot's going to look like. And uh, it's just a great, great way to shoot, great lens to have. So, so there you go. I hope, I hope that was interesting and useful to you all. All right, we are going to jump into the Q&A. There's a whole bunch of questions or comments that have come by already. If you have a question and you're watching live, make sure you type at Photo Joseph in front of it, and we'll get it up onto the Q&A right now.